welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about Hi, everyone. I'm Lori LeBay, and I'm the host of Alzheimer's Speaks Radio, and I'm thrilled you can join us today. If you liked our opening music, it's called Clarion Call by the Mark Arneson Band, and you can download that on any of your favorite music platforms. For those of you that are new to our show, Alzheimer's Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We like to have real conversations with real people doing neat things in the realm of dementia. So we speak with people all around the world, from those diagnosed to family and friends, to advocates, to researchers, businesses, authors, musicians, movie directors, and so much more. So maybe, just maybe, you could be one of our next guests. Now, before I introduce our guests and we get talking about a reimagining dementia, I'd like to do a couple of shout outs. So one is to Arthur Senior Care. They sponsor a memory cafe I do twice a month, the second and the fourth Wednesday of the month. It's virtual. Anybody can attend. Also to Brookdale North Oaks, we do an in-person group for care partners. Though the last couple of months due to COVID, we have done them online. But anybody is welcome to join and you can get information by going to alzheimerspeaks.com for further information. Also coming up, I'm really excited because I haven't been doing much in-person stuff. Um, We are going to be doing a film screening and talk back on the film, A Timeless Love. And that'll be in Winona, Minnesota, April 7th and April 8th. And again, you can find more information on the site about that. I would be amiss if I didn't put in a plug for Dementia Map. This is a great resource directory, over 150 categories. We're building it slowly because we want the people on there to respond to you. There is an events calendar, so there's lots of free things that you can participate in, as well as a glossary of terms, because we all know we don't know what we don't know, and a blog. So go to DementiaMap.com. We are going to hear from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner, and they're going to be talking to us about the foot bar walker, and we'll be right back. I love the foot bar walker, and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest. There are some clients who, despite our best rehab efforts, just aren't able to return to performing a sit-to-stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver-specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer in the Foot Bar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day, and don't forget, if you can't do it, adapt it. Well, I'm thrilled to be back with you and I can finally introduce you to our guest today. Again, we're going to be talking with a group called Reimagining Dementia, making the world a better place. And so I'm going to introduce you to three of its members. So first, I'm going to introduce you to Robin Curtin. She is an artist who works creatively with people living with dementia at the Biddo Method, which is a virtual arts-based learning center. And as the co-creator, she also works on what's called the Good Conversations, which is a dementia-friendly video series. 
She has almost 20 years experience working as an expressive arts therapist with people of all ages and abilities. And we're just thrilled to have you with us, Robin. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Lori. Next, I'm going to introduce you to Simon Lau. Simon is a two-time Grammy-winning musician, songwriter, and record producer. He has worked with people living with dementia for eight years and has been inspired by his father's journey of 18 years living with Alzheimer's and caring for him. Through his work, he has come to see the true transformation and life-giving power of music. And I'm thrilled you're with us as well. So thank you, Simon, for joining us today. My my own mom lived with dementia for 30 years. So I'm, I'm right there with you on that journey. And then, of course, we have Mr. Wally Cox, who is an advocate for those with dementia and for those who care for a loved one as well. His goal is to see a reframing of how many view this disease. Um, There's so much fear out there and lack of knowledge. And so he wants to change it from a life of can't do to one of a life that can do. He is also on the board for Dementia Alliance International. And um, he is on the steering committee for the group Reimagining Dementia. So welcome, Wally. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Thank you, Lori. Well, we're from all around the place. So uh, Simon and Robin are up in Toronto. Wally's in warm uh, California. And I'm in Minnesota. So we're we're spread all over the place. Uh, I'm really excited about having this conversation with you all today. But I always like to start out by asking everybody, Have they been touched in their own family or circle of friends with dementia? And I'm going to start with you, Robin, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, everyone has a backstory, a deep and wide um, connection with dementia, both professionally and personally. Personally, I have family members, um, my own father, um, uh, cousins and aunts and uncles. I've got uh, my best friend's mother. Um, my sister-in-law's mother, like all over the place, of course. Um, and then I've had the privilege of uh, a lot of professional uh, connection with people living with dementia. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. You've been touched in a really wide range in terms of, of family and friends. Simon, how about you? I had mentioned that your dad was living with the disease for 18 years. Yeah, my dad, my own dad had it for a long time and we saw a, a, a you know, a real change over that time. But he um the thing that I saw was how much music still really meant to him even when he he uh he could not really remember our names or who we were. In fact, could have lost the ability to 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 speak in, you know, in coherent lang in, in in sentences. But music still reached him and um really inspired my work in this area and uh, getting involved at the the bit of academy which is now the bit of method and um and i've got to know many people there too who are living with dementia and who bec- i've become very close to and formed wonderful relationships with you know wonderful thank you and wally how about you how has dementia touched your life i remember as a young man my grandmother who i loved dearly started acting a little bit peculiar. And as she slipped into dementia, she was described as being senile and she lived to be into her nineties and she fought valiantly. And she always used to tell me I was her first grandchild. And she would tell me that 15 times towards the end, every time I went to visit her, I thought she was just peculiar. And I didn't really understand what was going on. Newly married and having babies. And, you know, you just think your mother, grandmother's getting peculiar and there she goes. And then she passed away only to have my father start getting peculiar and start making strange comments and behavioral problems and things like that. He uh, started with his journey into dementia that where we really started noticing things were going wrong in his early sixties, he lived to be about 88 years old. So he died about three years ago uh, with dementia. And then his sister died about a year later with dementia. Uh, While he was fighting towards the end with dementia, I was diagnosed uh, 
with having dementia. I you know, started having some severe problems with my executive functioning. My verbal skills were good, but I just couldn't operate my job anymore. I was in a, in a, in a business where you had to deal with contracts and things like that. I just couldn't do it. And uh, I ended up going to the doctor and I was told that I had uh, probably had Alzheimer's. It's since been changed to some other stuff, but I have dementia for sure. And uh, my brother, who's 49 years old, has Lewy body and he's no longer able to drive, walks with a cane most of the time, uh, has some Parkinson's going on too. So he's also got dementia now too. So it kind of raged down through the side of my family as best I know. Uh, you know, when I look at my mother's side of the family, there isn't any of that. So mm-hmm. for us, it's kind of uh, running through our family, although they look at it and they can't figure out why yet, but it's certainly there. And you know, I have children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews, and I worry for their future too. So yep. that's, what, that's how it's affected me as far as getting the disease it's affected other things too but that's the start okay well thank you all for sharing i I think it's important for people to understand how vastly spread this disease is because it's something that so many people don't talk about and you know we can't improve things if we don't have the conversation and that's what i love about reimagining uh dementia so given that wally i'm going to pick on you and say you know how did reimagining dementia start and why? I think if I, I start with just explaining it, like uh, I th- everybody that's diagnosed, it seems like that I've ever talked to, and I've talked to hundreds now of people, it's almost um, a universal experience of fear and uh, panic and uh, not knowing where to go and what to do and sort of bouncing into the walls and wanting to crawl in a hole and pull a rock over your head and your world becomes very small and very narrow and it's very frightening uh you know i know that when i got diagnosed i got contacted by the local uh newspaper because i resigned at the school board and they wanted to know what the skinny was you know who's fighting with who and i quit because i was told i needed to get out of there because i was couldn't remember things and was making mistakes uh, by my so my doctor said, you need to cut this kind of stuff out and I told the newspaper, I said, I, I'm, I'm ill and, and I don't want to talk about it. And that's it. And I was very ashamed of having been told that I had dementia and that it was affecting my memory and my relationships and stuff like that. It was, it was very frightening. And this is a common experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started building walls between me and my wife. Uh, I just felt alone, even though she was desperately trying to reach out to me. I just felt very alone and I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. And she encouraged me finally to go down to the Alzheimer's Association, which is about an hour and a half from where we live. And we attended some group meetings. And there I found people that were talking about this disease openly and living a life and being successful, even after their diagnosis. From there, I went into the uh, Dementia Alliance International and got into a group where we shared our struggles and our hopes and fears. And uh, that helped reconfirm to me that I did not need to crawl into a hole and quit living. And from there, I was introduced through a fellow I met in Dementia Alliance International named Mike Belleville to Susan uh, uh, Massad and Mary Friedley, who did some uh, plays and things about people with dementia and stuff. And they were coming to San Francisco and they were going to put this whole thing together. And they wonder if I'd go down and help out. I thought, well, I don't know. Sure. Why not? You know, any excuse to go down somewhere where it's nice. We live in a rural area and have a decent dinner. and I'm all for it. So um, (laughs) I said, sure. COVID hit. Everything went off the rails as everybody knows. And the next thing I got, I heard about was a, group called reimagining dementia uh aka the joy of dementia that might sound peculiar to some people and i'll explain that maybe in a minute and i'd had that conversation separately with a group i was involved in prior to hearing about them form this group using the same words the joy of dementia and despite what you might think there's a great deal of joy still to be found 
in life. And in some respects, it's been, uh, it, it's actually taught me from getting off the treadmill and living the life that I have left in the best way humanly possible. And I think I'm really working very diligently to do that. I'm trying very hard to end my life with uh, memories and not plans. So I'm out doing everything I can. Great. Oh, I and, like that. I like yeah. that saying. Yeah, well, that's not my quote. That's out of the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago from that's somebody. That's very good. About I love that. I liked it a lot. Yes, I hear you, man. And Absolutely. I was already doing that. I just never protect, happened to use that phrase, but I thought, fits me. Yeah. So um, when we first started doing the Reimagining Dementia Group, we talked a lot about, you know, what are we trying to do and where we're going and all that stuff. And there's a variety of people in there. Some people in there that have dementia like I do. Uh, and, I, you know, you can see I still got my verbal skills. Don't estimate tomorrow what I told you. And don't ask me to do math or read a contract. Can't do it. But I can sing and I can draw and I can still have fun. And I can make my wife laugh. So life's pretty good. But we got together and said, what are we going to do? We had people in there with PhDs and a bunch of letters after their names. I don't know what the heck any of that stuff meant, but all nice people. And we talked a little bit about conversations and what kind of conversations do we want to have? And I expressed that I had heard from a pastor one time about porch conversations. Hey, how you doing? We need to get together and have lunch sometime. How's the kids? Great. Good to see you. Goodbye. That's kind of a porch conversation. And he said, you have your living room conversations. People come in, yes, have some dinner, break some bread, watch the football game, watch the Rams win the Super Bowl, that kind of stuff. Sorry, everybody else. And anyways, you, uh, you'd kind of, it's a little more intimate, but it's not really intimate. And then there's the kitchen conversations. That's where you sit down with your kids and you talk about your future. That's when you sit down and talk about to your children and your family about who we are and what we represent. Heartfelt connections. And that's really, I think, at the bottom of everything we're doing is trying to make heartfelt connections to people through music, art, compassion, understanding, connections. It's very difficult to be told you have fatal disease, go home, do your best, and good luck as the person who hears it. It's very difficult to be sitting next to your loved one and hear of that conversation with the doctor and then with them. And it's very difficult for the healthcare provider who wants to cure you and make you feel better. And that's their life goals, make people feel better to have that conversation with the pain, patient and their car partner. There's, there's hearts and, and minds being damaged from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left. So we need to we need to reframe this so it's not a catastrophic conversation it's at its inception and i was no different one minute before the doctor told me i had dementia than i was a minute after he told me i had dementia in reality mm -hmm. in my mind i went from point a to point z in a matter of seconds and I started reframing my whole view of the world, my relationship with my family, my friends, how I was going to hide out, how I was going to disguise this, what I was going to do, and how, you know, and all these different things started racing through my brain as I started building walls between the relationships of the people I needed most at that time, because I didn't want to damage their heart and I didn't want to damage my own. Yeah. So that's well, what reimagining dementia is going towards, as far as I know. Sounds good. Thank you, Wally. I'm going to go to, to Simon and um, ask why you chose to get involved and, and what have you seen them ac accomplish so far? Well, um, it was actually Robin who invited me to get involved with this because, you know, she, I think you were, you'd, you'd, you were already attending some of the meetings, as I understand it, Robin, and getting involved. And then there was this idea of creating a song as a sort of a a centerpiece or so, or something to kind of represent the the um the goals and the, and the i and the, and the, and the re, raison d'etre of reimagining dementia yep absolutely and, and to write a song and um you know we we'd worked together quite a lot at the bit of academy and and you know i think 
it coming from the same kind of vibe of, of, of trying to sort of, well, really recognizing how powerful art is in this, in, in this situation and the, the fundamental way that it builds relationships and helps to build relationships, which is such, such the key thing here is, um, you know, connection. Uh, Wally just talked about it a lot, you know, uh, the, the instinct is to want to separate and kind of, oh, that person's sick and th this. But actually, you know, we've got to find ways to do virtually the opposite of that. We've got to go towards welcome, uh, you know, be really open-hearted. And, and music is one of those things that's just splendid at this. It's just mind-bogglingly good, you know. And I, I, I'm, I still get goosebumps thinking about what, <laughs> you know, it just the way music works it's quite extraordinary and i've been doing this a long time i'm 60 years old now i've been a professional musician for 35 years you know it's like i'm my mind is being blown all over again about how powerful music is so it was really the music entity and the creativity yes the creative of element of trying to put together a really good song mm -hmm. and working with a wide group of people people living with dementia you know uh researchers artists advocates loved ones everybody having a say mm -hmm. making sure we really have a message in this song that we can all really get behind and it was a fascinating process to do that well and what i like is uh, with the inclusivity is that i don't think we can have sustainable change if we're not inclusive i mean it just someone's going to hammer it down you know <laughs> one way or the other so Hearing from everybody, I think, is really important, and I think uh, is one of the things I really love about the mission. Robin, what drew you in to the group, and what have you seen them accomplish so far? Well, it's it's pretty amazing, actually. It's uh, I believe that uh, the coalition, so Reimagining Dementia, uh, a coalition for social justice, is uh, less than two years old. Started off as a very grassroots force. Um, with uh, just a few academics, policymakers, researchers, a couple of artists, a couple of care partners, and of course led by people living with dementia. And in under two years' time, uh, we are over 600 members strong, uh, international, and really all connected just through the magic of uh, Zoom. All of this connection has happened um, and it's a really a testament to the passion and the belief that we are all equally alive, equally human in our ability. Mm -hmm. So it's the coalition itself has grown. And um, and now I can't remember what the first part of your question was, Lori. Oh, what, right. what drew you into the group? I think that a sense of connection and community that the, the sense of possibility that Simon and I were able to experience uh, with direct um, relationships with people living with dementia using the arts, and that all of these people uh, coming in with reimagining dementia also believe that there was still joy and power mm -hmm. in creating something, uh, using the creative arts to get a message across to end stigma and tragic mm -hmm. narrative. Mm. I love that. I'm I'm a big believer in joy in the journey for sure. Um, mm. Otherwise, boy, my 30 years would have been an awfully long, <laughs> you know, if you, you know, and in, just in life in general, I think it's something that people need to understand. It's going to show up differently at different stages of our life and, and living with a disease with any type of form of dementia is just another stage that we have to learn to adapt. And there's so many beautiful things that are easily accessible for us to leverage and partake in and then to see this coming together of people all around the world. I happen to be a member of the coalition, though I don't get to many meetings just because of my schedule, but I just I love the work that everyone is doing with this. Um, Robin, can you talk a little bit about the Let's Reimagine video and then we're going to share that you want to set that up for us? Oh, with pleasure, Lori, for sure. First, I just wanted to come back to the fact that uh, people living with dementia can be role models. Their humanity shines through. And I think Wally is just such a, an amazing representation of this. 
how Wally is aiming to live his life is how I want to live my life in the fullest possible way in the moment with rich relationships. So we really, this let's reimagine is a call for everyone to model better and to live fully. So back to the video, we created um, through this fascinating collaboration process. I did bring Simon into the dark side, brought him in um, and he drank the Kool-Aid for sure. And I just knew from the privilege of working with him and the relational way that we work um, at the Bateau, that it would be just a marvelous fit. And of course it was, he became the, the chief uh, cook in the kitchen, creating this gorgeous stew, this beautiful song. And so the goal of the video was to create a visual celebration of the song and one that reflected a worldview, different ages and lived experience of people living with dementia. We wanted to show their humanity and uh, as importantly, their agency. So we asked dementia advocates and they're supported to share their personal photos, their home videos, their artwork, signage. And we receive submissions from all over the world. And if you go onto the Reimagine Dementia website, you will see some of this. We have a whole art gallery now of these submissions and a picture's worth a thousand words, of course. But in the video, we hope that we've honored the joy of possibility. And really, we hope that the song and the video together will be a strong call for all of us to make a difference. These are the messages that have been shared with such grace and conviction by people living with dementia. Wonderful. Anything that you want to add to that right now, Simon, or should we just go watch it? Oh, enjoy the video. And I, I, I'm just thrilled that, you know, it, when you when you create music, the, the next step of, of making a video to, to represent that song, and especially if it's a message song, that's a that's a tricky step to get right. And. Lindsay and Robin and everyone who contributed and pulled the video together, really stunning work. And I'm so, I'm so proud of it all. You know, it's wonderful. It really says, it really says, the, the video brings to life what the song is saying. Well, let's take a peek and then we'll be right back. And I are like trees in the forest. Equal and strong in any weather. Joy in the sunshine, bow and bend with the rain. Our roots grow together. We are, we are like birds of a feather. I think it was because out of fear, um, 
because of what they thought the disease was. And there's nothing more devastating than when you go, you get your results, and the doctor no longer talks to you. Because I want to see a, 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 a difference of attitude coming out from the world out there. Let's talk about the process. And Simon, I'm going to go to you since uh, Robin referred to you as chief cook on this process. Chief of, cook uh, and bottle washer. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, a, you've got, uh, you know, an astounding song and then you're adding all these visuals. You, you have people from all over the world. I'm sure it was a, you know, a large committee in terms of people giving feedback on what this thing should look like. How do you handle all that, you know, coming coming at you from a creative standpoint? Uh, it, it's it's tricky. You know, it took it took some time and we actually had to have a bit of a pause at one point where we were just trying. We had a deadline that we were trying to go towards and it it, it just became a bit too fraught. And we were trying to fulfill too many things too quickly, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I did appre- come to appreciate how important, you know, this process is to to almost um uh, you know what's that word where where you kind of you know you have to go through you have to kind of get all the submissions you have to get everyone's input and that's a time very time um uh, consuming activity and a lot of wading through of stuff and i had a lot of help from everybody i would give a special mention to holly holly, holly marland who's another one of the um song creators because you you know lots of people were sending in uh, vocal vocals we did sessions where we 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 uh, taught them how to sing se- sections of the song and everybody was sending in stuff now that's a lot of stuff to wade through and put into the right order and find and what and da 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 and uh um so holly helped enormously with that that's the technical side i mean the the process of creating it was just gorgeous because you know that's that's the joy that's where the joy lies in the creative process so you know 
I, I had some music, which I just sent out, like, right, you know, oh, okay, how about this, folks? And everybody goes, oh, okay, cool. And then Robin came up with an idea, and then Holly came in with an idea, and, and Taylor Curto is another one of the songwriters. We kicked those around for a bit, and then we sort of wanted to present that to, the, to, to everybody to learn bits of, and we wanted to include some spoken word sections, you know, where it's real... Uh, somebody saying about how somebody living with dementia is saying how this has affected them and what something very very tangible and real and um, you know as it as it went on it became this real jigsaw puzzle of putting all these pieces building it up having sections where everyone's singing having little sections that are uh, very very uh, intimate I mean um, uh, Wally starts us off in the song, and uh, we are like trees in the forest, you know, and it's immediately you're on a journey there, you know, and it's it was, it's it's just been quite gorgeous. When I, I listen back to it now, I, I feel it really brings joy to my heart to, to hear it, and I really... I really, I, I know it's spreading out and it's, you know, the songs tend to do this. They just have their own way. They percolate out. And it's it's really gratifying to see how it's connecting. Well, it must be hard, too, when you're trying to pick, because my guess is you couldn't put everybody's information into the song. And no. so so anytime you have to leave something kind of on the cutting room floor, that's that's difficult. But um, is that where the kind of the gallery got created then for people to be able to see other pieces? Well, you know, what happened was it, it just sort of took off in the synergy of the project more beget more. And um, people were inspired so much so that we were, we were about to premiere the video and we were still getting submissions. And so we <laughs> thought, well, we got to create a home for this. We got to create a, a landing spot for this. That's exactly mm. right. And then, of course, now that people are hearing the song, they're trying to make it, and we want them to make it their own. They're teaching versions of it. They're doing little dance steps with local organizations. And it's so, as Simon's saying, it's it's rippling out and taking on a life of its own all over the place. Mm. Well, we that's just, uh, what was very thrilling. I just heard from Mary that there's a group in. Um, an organization in Malaysia who want to do a version of the song and they wanted some sheet music for it. So, you know, we're, we're preparing that. And, um, but my hope is that people do their own versions of it, you know, and I've provided various versions on the website, ones that don't have, it's just an instrumental version. You could make up your whole song, whole song if you want, or you could just have the choruses and do your verses the way you like. You can listen to just the a cappella, just on its own, and just the voices on their own. You know, be creative with it. And um, so it's it's a love. I think we're just at the start of the whole, in a sense, you know, we've created something now. It's the start of another kind of journey with the song now and how that starts to mushroom out and grow in its with its own life. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's neat because a lot of times people create something and it's like, no, it's mine. It's ours. You know, you, yeah, you can't touch not, it. None you of can't. that. <laughs> and, and to be able to just give freely and see, see what others do. Yeah. Um, and my guess is, you know, uh, Robin, when you were saying, you know, you, more and more stuff just kept coming in. It's because I think people go, well, if they can do it. I can do it. Oh, well, I didn't know yeah. that would work or Oh, gosh, what, what I'm doing matter? Okay, it, yeah. this is, you know, and so it's an empowering piece when you're that collaborative and that open. There's no wrong, there's no right. Mm. It's just, let's put it together and make it as beautiful as we can. And and I love that you found a home for everything with mm. the gallery. I remember a conversation with uh, Lindsay, the video, but the, the person who put together the video, and, you know, he really crystallized the thinking behind it, the visuals of it, it, it that, that, you know, the song is a, a message song. It's, it's a, it has a message, which is to let's reimagine, let's, let's look at this again and let's flip it, you know. Let's have a really positive view of what's possible for someone living with dementia and their loved ones and their family. There's still so much joy and life and creativity, creativity to be had. 
And so he, he was said, you know, we just need lots of stuff where people are really enjoying themselves and, and having a wonderful time. And we've got so many gorgeous clips in there, you know, that are very touching and fit the sentiment of the song. The song is a joyful song, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it stirs the heart. And that's I, I, I really wanted to do that. And I, I think we pulled it off. It really is an uplifting, stir, stirring song, you know. You, you feel like lifted up after you've, after you've heard it. Wally, what was it like for you to be part of this whole creative process? Yeah, I found it uh, daunting. Uh, the you know, I uh, if, and you have to get on a computer and do a bunch of other stuff and click on this and download that and put it somewhere in the outer space or something. I don't know. So, I finally reached out to a, a friend. Uh, um, Casey Aikland over in Reno and we were going through there so I said can I come by and maybe you could record this and send it to orbit or wherever it needs to go I don't know because it's just hard to do and you know, I'm not computer literate at all and so I went over there and he very kindly said I sat down in a chair and sang it as best I could not knowing what the heck I'm doing and then you know next thing I know you hear it in the song it was kind of fun to hear your voice although I did I have since gone over and signed up for beginners uh, singing at the junior college. I think I, I, think I bit I off more than I can chew. But I, I don't thought, know if you need, I need help, beginners so. class, Wally. I think I'm you could go to, at the very least, intermediate class. Holy oh, smokes. No. I'm learning about what notes mean and what the little <laughs> other dots all over the music mean. And I thought, holy mackerel. I, I, told, I told the teacher, what do you think so far? I said, I just want to know how to sing Happy Birthday better without making a fool out of myself. So, But I'm having fun. <laughs> Because I love to sing, you know, and I I never heard myself sing. I've sang, wow. but I never ever heard myself sing. So it's kind of, gee, there you are. There you go. Isn't that great? Wow. I thought I thought you'd done lots of singing. I I, I, I sing a lot. I just I've sang at church. I sang up in okay. front of people, but I never heard myself. You sing, oh, and yes. it's fun. I understand. Okay. So you do sing in church and things. You you you've. I used to. I used to. I don't. I don't right now. But I, I sing at home. And I. Yeah. You know, yeah. My yeah. poor wife nuts, but that's okay. And now you've got a legacy piece. A legacy yeah. piece. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And you think of how many people are part of that whole process. That's pretty cool too, in and of itself. Um, There's a lot of voices in there. A lot of voices. But one, yeah. I just say one thing, actually, Laurie, what was lovely is that we, there were so many uh, people submitting wow. stuff. And, and there was, because we have these big choruses, absolutely, no, nobody who submitted anything is not in there. You know, everyone's in there, even if they're just in there for the choruses, you know, <laughs> it's like everyone, everyone's voice who sang and sent stuff in is in the song. And it's... Um, that was very important to me for, to, to, to make that happen. And when you have a, a big chorus like that, more the merrier, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, neat. Um, Robin, was there a, a, a special phrase or a favorite line or, and, and my guess is that probably changes as you listen to it. I, I know, like I do a, a preview of a, uh, screening of a movie and I probably showed it 300 times and different things hit me differently every time you know I watch it but is there something that stands out to you you know um it all of it is gorgeous and you're right Lori every time you listen to it and I encourage everybody to go on the reimagining dementia website have a listen go on our youtube channel have a listen um there is something thrilling. It, it was um, a beautiful village collaborative effort, um, gorgeous. But I, I have to say um, the first line, um, you and I are like trees in a forest. Um, that was my line that was created from the fact that I had worked with Simon and trusted him so much and had so much comfort with him. And that through these virtual meetings, we would... We would Zoom together, um, our little songwriting group, and we grew very close and had a lot of laughs. And that passion shone through so that um, I felt totally unafraid to offer some of those lines. We knew we wanted an organic 
aspect to the song so that it could be poetic and not just right on the nose. So it was really important yes. Yes. Um, to have some of those um, symbolic um, nature references. And we had already done a lot of symbol, sim, symbol work with the idea of trees being resilient and then being in a sense community and supporting each other below the ground with their roots. And when I hear, I, I put forward that line as a, one of the songwriters and it, it lasted, it went through all of the collaborative, uh, <laughs> it was massaged and, and um, vetted and so forth. And to hear Wally sing it and then how Simon positioned it in this beautiful, evocative sort of spiritual feeling jungle that he places us in with the magic of his songwriting. To me, it immediately grounds us in possibility, um, something bigger than ourselves. We're, we're part of something larger. I find that really moving. Well, when I think of tree too, I mean, so often you think of family tree and you get to, you know, pick your family members. Um, but I also think of, you know, the, the strength of the tree, but then also the beauty of the trees going through the season and each one is precious in its own right. And I think of the, you know, to me, the progression of the disease, each phase, there's beauty there. You know, yes. you just, you just have to look, you have to look for it sometimes. It's a very, very, you know, powerful song. How about you, Simon, any particular phrase or feature within the song that just hits you each time what what really hits me this now nowadays is uh, uh, after quite a lot of the song has gone by you have two gentlemen um uh and oh my goodness why can't i remember jp and uh, jp and who what was the second fellow oh his name was um pradeep kumar pradeep, pradeep and JP and they speak one speaks in Hindu one speaks in in uh, in um, Urdu and um, and it's like it, it's just very powerful it, it just sort of immediately kind of just <laughs> globalizes it in one fell swoop and I you know I'm I'm I love melody and I love singing but I, I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly fascinated on, on how the spoken word sits with music and how powerful that can be. Um, so in the song, the places where you get spoken word sections are, are very powerful to me. And um, it's a very delicate business to, to, to do because so you, you try something out and, oh, no, that does not work at all. You know, you know, so you have to really be delicate and... Uh, but then finally something just drops and it just feels exactly right. And, um, you know, but it's, uh, it's quite a journey, this whole song. I mean, you know, somebody said to me, it's quite long, isn't it? I said, yeah, it just sort of, uh, it's not a three minute pop song. No, it's a, it's a real kind of, it has a, a real beginning and it tra travels and then it comes to the end. We even have a fancy key change at the end. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wally, you wanted to add something? No, well, you know, I. It, it's not a. It's not so much as a song, as it's a story. Yeah. That sang. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't normally tell stories in you know, three hundred twenty seconds or whatever. You know, whatever how long that is. I mean, I. It, it's a story, and you know, when, when I when I like to paint, and you know, the absence of color. And the dark browns and the ochres and the weird greens and all those things are just as important as the bright blues and the, and the you know, the rose reds and the hot pinks to paint something that's beautiful in the spoken and word and the songs. So even the voices that are a little out of tune or whatever, that, that palette Absolutely. is what gives palette. beauty to this thing because it makes it human. Very human. Makes it human and everybody I didn't know everybody was in there. I was hoping everybody was in there. It sounds so nice, like everybody's in there. So I thought, is that? I wasn't I sure. I've done but... a count, but there's a cost of thousands. I can show you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's real life because not everybody has that perfect tone, you know, and right? and yet you can still participate. You can still, Absolutely. you know, be part of the community. Even... Authentic sound. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and then when you get past sound, you get individuals. And even those who can't sing, 
can smile. Yeah. And those that can't uh, smile can yeah. hug. Yeah. And those that can't do anything can just be there. Simple, godlike creatures just there, just like the sometimes the plants in your garden are just there and they add to the beauty of the whole thing. So it's wonderful that we had the video and the written, you know, the written and the singing and all and the spoken word. I think mm-hmm. it's I think it's fabulous. It was very I was very shocked at how good it came out. Thanks to right. people like Simon and Robin. Um, Robin, you had a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to add on to what Simon was saying about the power of the spoken word. I wanted to give a shout out to, there were three dementia advocates that Simon and I interviewed, oh. and which was a real um, privilege for us. Um, like Wally, these people are are exceptional in their humanity and their uh, passion for change. Michael Belleville, Bernie Godino, and Phyllis Burr. Um, in any scenario, on any plane, they would be exceptional people. But giving their time and their talents and their voices to reimagining dementia, um, we interviewed them about what they wanted the world to know about their experiences and what their hopes were. And it was such a moving experience. But of course, from you know, hours of uh, interviewing, we were able to call just a couple of sentences from each. So they appear uh, as spoken word statements in the song. And then so impactfully, they appear in the video as well. So you're really literally getting it from people living with dementia. And as everything that we have done has been led by them. We, we've learned from them. We've grown with them and uh, we're hoping to make change with them. And so, although I, I love the song, the, those interviews, their comments are just extraordinary. Hmm. Are the full interviews part of the gallery at all? Isn't that an interesting thing? Lori, you just gave us a eureka <laughs> moment. We're going to place with we their We really permission. should. We yeah, really we should. have the, the videos um in full on record they're not currently living on uh the gallery but i love that idea we're gonna have to credit you a little footnote (laughs) very good idea i mean it's Uh, yeah yeah. because everything they said was extraordinary well it's real lived experience isn't it you know just uh very powerful very engaging speakers all three of them you know um yeah well, it sounds like, like, like Wally. Yep. Yeah. It sounds like one heck of a team you've pulled together, you know, to pull this project together. Um, Robin, I was going to ask you, what are like the hopeful outcomes that you want through the launch of the song? I would imagine it's awareness, but then I'm, I'm also hearing you guys talk about, you know, others taking this on and making it their own. 100%. As well. Yeah, absolutely. That's it, Lori. We want people to um, gain awareness, to be uh, have their eyes open to the joy of possibility. For sure, join us. Join and become a member. Consider joining and becoming a member of Reimagining Dementia. Put the um, website um, and the fact that you're a member on your um, email, on your signature to promote. Um, take a look and consider bringing the video to your local organization. There's been applications already where people are uh, showing the video before conferences to educate and gain access. Um, so it's becoming uh, part of a education plan all over the world. We have people who play the song before their movement classes for people living with dementia. Um, we have choirs who are teaching it intergenerational um, So we want people to make it their own. We really want people to spread the word. We want people to share with Reimagining Dementia. If they have an event or they have uh, a gathering that we can help spread the word. Um, Yeah, those are our calls to action. Cool. Um, Anything you want to add, Simon? I want the song to travel long and far, you know, so... um... Any time, you know, if you if you if you find somewhere where you can play it to people or share it in some way, you know, it's 
my aim was to make a piece of music that really stood up as a as a piece of music whatever you know in whatever mm -hmm. platform so um you know and i've always tried to do that when making music with with people living in the dementia and this whole area i i don't want to dumb anything down i want it to be really as good as we can make it and really celebrate music celebrate our lives i'm uh, working together you know and i i um i think this song can really does that and so i really hope it inspires a lot of people to think again about dementia to think uh think even if it's a single person living at home and they've their loved one has dementia you know they can tap into music music is there for you it it'll it'll help you an enormous amount and you could start with this song but oh that's just the beginning you know <laughs> wonderful wally is there anything else that you'd like to say we've got a place for you at the table come on in pour yourself a cup and join the conversation We'd love to have you. I love that. Robin, a question for you. Is there a, a like, I'm sure some people are like, uh, how much does it cost to join? Is there a fee? And do you guys take donations too is always something of interest for people. Great questions. Doesn't cost anything to become a member. If you click onto our website, www.reimaginedementia.com, um, we invite you to become a member. Uh, join us. We have a lot of fun at our gatherings and our events, and you will instantly have, as Wally said, a place at the table and a sense of community. Um, in terms of donations, we do accept donations, and um, we are trying to uh, we just recently started uh, the donation program. Uh, the money will be going to education and to shine light on uh, less visible sectors of uh, the dementia community. And um, yeah, welcome all. And you've got, besides the video there, you've got the gallery, but there's lots of other resources that are listed there as well. Can people see who's part of um, the organization? Because I know for some people, they like to see who else is, is in there um, and that can kind of lift their spirits or say, oh, they're in there. I better be in there. You know, <laughs> how'd I not know about this? But what, what, yeah, whatever works for people to, to get you part of this again, great organization doing wonderful things. Simon, anything you'd like to, to say in wrapping up? Oh, I really hope that, um, that people join, join in, you know, it's, uh, I feel like, you know, a sense that a tide is turning a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. that the, the awareness of, um, what dementia is and that, that it's not this um as someone said to me once it's not long ago oh they've got this dreadful disease mm -hmm. well you know that's that's a way to look at it it doesn't have to be that way at all you know there's immense possibilities immense joy to be had if you focused on what the problems are you'd really as 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 uh, wally said you know you just want to get in a hole but it doesn't have to be that way at all. And there's a wonderful community of people who love life and who, who are very welcoming and, and want to have a lot of fun and create. And so, yeah, join us, please. Well, and I kind of wonder if COVID wasn't a gift for this collaboration yes. to come together because it got everybody more comfortable with Zoom and talking yeah. with people around the world. So I, I kind of think as much as we all want it to go away, I think there's been some really benefits to that sure. and people wanting to do something and be part of something. So again, I, um, I just uh, clap my hands here together and honor you guys for pushing this out into the world. And uh, here at Alzheimer's Speaks, we are going to try to push it out for you a little bit further and really encourage people again to go to reimaginingdementia.com. You can also email them at reimaginingdementia at gmail.com. Check it out. And like I say, with, with all of our, our shows, don't keep this stuff a secret. It doesn't do <laughs> anybody any good. Pass it along. We're better together. We're stronger and we can we can make change so much faster and, and we're smarter when we all work together. <laughs> we yeah. find out things are possible that maybe we didn't know were. 
And so it's, it's a beautiful thing when people come together and uh, yes. reimagine what life could actually be. So thank you all for your time today. So thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you very much. Well, hi, I'm Lori LeBay, and, and I wanted to tell you about Alzheimer's Speaks, which is another great podcast. You see, my own mother lived with dementia for 30 years, and I felt lost. Did you know every three seconds someone in the world is being diagnosed with dementia? Odds are it's going to hit your families, too. We want to help you connect to services, products, tools, research, and stories so you can be prepared. Please subscribe to Alzheimer's Speaks on your favorite podcast platform.